Alrighty, so I got this 480 up on the stand, got the pan off. Pan actually looks really good. So I'm gonna be doing a rebuild on this thing. We're gonna dual feed the direct drum, rollerize the rear output. We're gonna do a billet input shaft, billet forward hub, rollerize forward hub. And we're gonna do a extreme automatics reverse manual valve body, trans brake with third gear lockup. So that's the part number here for the kit. I got everything in the box. They got the rebuild kit and all the other stuff in here. So I'm gonna get started on pulling this thing apart. And I have several other full 4LED transmission rebuild videos on this channel. So if you see like clip that are inserted that are not this current setting right now or I'm wearing something different I probably just took a clip from an old video and put it in because I've done full disassembly and assembly videos before so if you see some other stuff I probably just added it in there also put different timestamps in the video so you can jump forward to just the sections you need and then if you're here just specifically for the trans brake install you'll know exactly where to look for it all right so after we get the oil pan off you just twist the filter pull the filter out and I'm not keeping that so that can go right in the garbage Next we're going to take out all the bolts. You have 10 millimeter bolts and then 8 millimeter bolts on pressure switch. And then one thing to note here is this transmission did have a HD2 kit in it. And this is the pressure relief valve. So on my HD2 kit video, the last one I did, recommended not putting that in there. So you can see how that, that valve is actually in there like crooked. So this one is fully sealing, but you can see how it's in there crooked. So that's kind of the issue with this thing is this little spring pin just plugs a hole so if there's any like play back and forth in there or that thing gets stuck sideways you can actually lose pressure in the transmission and cause it to burn up so this one ended up being okay but i thought that was interesting that that thing's in there crooked all right so all these bolts are loose this uh, lubrication tube that goes to the t uh, tail housing has a bolt underneath it so I'm going to pull this thing out, just got to wiggle it and it'll come out. There we go. So now that that's removed, I can get this last bolt out. Next I'll get the harness off. The trans brake comes with its own plug that goes in the case. So you can wire directly through the new plug. So we're just going to get rid of this harness. And this one's all like broken and kind of gooey on the inside anyway. So we probably would have replaced this even if we weren't doing the trans brake. And these I'm just cracking loose by hand because my sockets are kind of worn. So I don't want to round these off using an impact. All right, now we can pull these out. And then we'll twist this thing. We're not going to be using this for the trans brake. We will be using the manual valve. Other than that, the valve body and the plate we're not going to use. So this is your manual valve for your gear selector. Just pull that out of the valve body and then we'll put it into the new valve body. Go ahead and get the reverse servo off right away. I'll just take this guy out. And then the intermediate piston is not going to be used. This isn't going to have engine braking. So the intermediate piston and spring can come out and that's not going to go back in when we do the trans brake. So that piston or servo will actually push on the intermediate band inside the transmission so that can come out. Next I'll get a magnet to get all the check balls out. I just like using some neo magnets. One, two, three, four, five, six, should be seven. All right, so got all the check balls out. The check balls are also not gonna go back in for the trans brake. So this is gonna use nylon balls. The second gear leave transmission is only gonna use one nylon ball. So we'll get to that part later. So now that all that stuff's out, I'm gonna get the center support bolt out and the fourth drum bolt, and then we should be able to tip it up and get the pump off. So this is a 3 8 12 point socket for the center support. And the rebuild kit will have a new one of these. That's interesting, this wasn't even tight. This was like finger, finger tight in here. But at least it's long enough. At least it was long enough to keep the thing from spinning around. But it is important for these bolts to be tight because these are also oiling holes. So you can see the bolt has a hole through it. And these are actually lube ports through the bolts. This one too. So like the center support bolt and this bolt, if those aren't tight, it uses the it uses the compression against the case to seal. So if those are not tight, they can actually leak there. So you want to make sure they're tight. Next I'll get the tail housing off. This is just six 15 millimeter bolt heads. And then that'll come off. And there is a rubber gasket that goes inside here. 
that'll be replaced on, with the with the rebuild kit. So I got this tipped up just to drain it out before I take the pump off. So while you're doing that, you can take out this rear lube fitting. This is already removed, but it's about this long and it goes inside the center support. So while you're taking it apart, if this fitting is still in there, you won't be able to get the center support out. Next, we're gonna take the pump off. These are just 13 millimeter bolt heads. So bolts like this, I try to keep separate from what's in the pan, like all the valve body stuff. I'll just take it and put it right back in the pan. But bolts like these and bolts from the like the tail housing, I'll leave outside of the pan because I don't want to put that the dirty bolts mixed back in with the bolts that are going to go in the valve body or back in the pan. Next, we're going to start to pry the pump out. So there's two little slots back here. You can get some leverage behind the pump. Uh, just be careful not to put too much too much pressure on it. There are a couple areas that you can actually pry on a little bit. Some are harder than others to get off. So after I pry back here a little bit, when you see the surface of the pump start to lift up a little bit, you can come around here and start to pry a little bit more. And then what I like to do is, is grab the pump and then I pull up with my thumb while I'm prying around it. And now I got it popped loose. Stuck about five minutes, but keep prying on it, it'll come out. So there's an O-ring right here that's going to have to get taken off. This is the lockup O-ring. If you don't have this O-ring on there, you won't have lockup. But this has to come off before you pull the pump out because the pump bushing will catch on it. See how that catches? So we got to take this off. Then the pump will come out. So next I'm going to take the pump apart, but I also have to take out the torque converter valve. It's a step in the instructions that wants you to grind a flat into this journal here on the TCC valve. So that valve on the drawing is number 223, 223 TCC valve. It's on the opposite side of the pump as the boost valve. So if we take a look at the bottom of the pump here, the boost valve is the one that has this little pin on it. And then this is the TCC valve over here. So it just has a little snap ring and it should come out. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to separate the pump because I want to make sure we have the line to lube drilling done and then we're also going to be putting the pump separator plate in here. All right, so this I'll just use the impact and these are just 13 millimeter bolts. All right, so now that I have this separated, I'll take the bolts out and then I actually have better access to this TCC valve to push this thing out of here. So I got the snap ring off already and then I'll just push it out. All right, so that plug did come out. We can just get the valve out. And that's what the TCC valve looks like. And I'm actually gonna give this back to him and then he's gonna take it to a friend and have it machined off instead of just grinding it off. You have a short pin, a long pin, and it's the second one up from the short pin. Okay, and this pump already does have the line to loop drilling done. So it would be this hole here, you're going to drill a hole through this little wall. So this hole here, I'll lift it up and you can see that there is already a hole drilled in that section, drilled through that wall. And I just want to add, because I get asked a bunch of times uh, what this thing is, this is like a little splash shield. It actually goes on the back side of the pump. Sometimes it'll fall off and people will find this thing on their table after they're done with the transmission. They're like, what the hell is this thing? It actually goes on the back side here where this little hole is next to the bolt hole. So this goes over the bolt hole and then this little elbow goes right inside there. So this thing goes on the back. So it's not a deal breaker if it doesn't go back in, but it's just like a little splash shield for a lube hole. Next, while we're already working on the pump, I'm gonna take the boost valve out. The Transbrake kit comes with the new boost valve sleeve, a spring, and then it comes with multiple washers in it. The washers are going to be used to shim the spring to add line pressure. So it says base pressure with this spring is going to be 150 and each shim should add 15 PSI. So we're going to add the two shims underneath the spring and then we'll take the fa factory boost valve sleeve and springs out of there. This just has a snap ring. So I'll get that snap ring out of the way. I'll pull this out. And yeah, sometimes they come out real easy and sometimes it's a little like dented around here so it comes out kind of hard. This one's coming out kind of hard. Alright, so I got the sleeve out now. I just had to grab on the end of it with the pliers and tap it out. So we're going to take the boost valve sleeve, the valve, the washer, and there's two springs in here. So we're going to take all these out. And then we're going to replace it with the Transbrake kit spring, the two washers inside the sleeve, and then we'll put it back in. Okay, so that's all pushed back in there now. I got the snap ring in. 
the new sleeve shims and spring is in there. Just gonna make sure I don't lose this spring for the TCC valve and then we can move on. All right, now we can start yanking this stuff up. So you can grab this whole shaft right here. This whole drum comes out and as you pull it out, just kind of make sure everything stays in the same order. So now this fourth drum will come out. Your forward drum comes out. Your direct drum comes out. All right, next here I'm gonna take out the intermediate band and then we can just discard this because this is not gonna go back in the transmission. This is the intermediate band. This transmission brake setup is not gonna have engine braking, so it's, this is not gonna go back in there. Along with leaving out the intermediate servo and springs, which we took out before. And then next we have a snap ring. You can see right there, we have a snap ring that comes out, so that's your intermediate snap ring. And that hauls in your intermediate clutch pack. And that's needed for second gear, I know that because I just broke this snap ring on a different transmission. This is the snap ring, so I broke that and lost second gear. Now this clutch pack comes out. Next, you have a wave plate that didn't come out with it. This is a wave plate. And then you have another snap ring. So this is your beveled, it's called a beveled snap ring. This goes on top of your center support. So they call it the beveled snap ring because there's a little bevel and that goes on the top. So it's flat on the bottom side, beveled on the top. Now your center support port will come out. If this piece doesn't come out, you have either your bolt or your rear lube port still in there. The only real modification that I'm going to be doing here is taking this second ring off. And this modification is going to be for part of the dual feed. And last but not least, you should be able to pull the rest of this out. So I'll just pull straight up, pull this whole piece out. Next thing, we just have this reverse band. And this should just pull right out. All right, so I got everything out of the case on this one, but I did want to show this lug, this lug, and this lug. They're all, they're all worn pretty bad. So if I take this washer and spin it, you can see that there's barely any, any material left holding this washer in place from spinning. So probably a good time to take this thing apart. We're gonna do a rollerized rear output, which is gonna put a new bushing in and a bearing. Not gonna have these washers in there. And then we won't rely on those lugs either. So probably a good thing that we caught it before it actually started spinning inside there and, and uh, rubbing on the case. All right, so next, Next up, I'm gonna do the case modification. We're gonna use a quarter 20 tap, and then we're gonna tap this hole right here with a set screw that comes with it. So underneath this reverse servo, you also have your one-two accumulator piston inside here. So blocking this hole is gonna block the flow to the one-two accumulator, and it basically just shortens the fluid path for the second gear apply. So that's why we're putting that in there. If you've ever heard of a accumulator delete or seen the accumulator delete plates, that's essentially the same function. So I'm just gonna tap this thing. It says on the instructions you only need to get a couple threads started in there that you don't need to actually drill all the way through the hole. So, see what I got so far and then we'll check it with the set screw. Okay, so I did take this to the car wash and I got it kind of sprayed out and cleaned off. You can see I do have the set screw in there. And we're also doing a set screw in the reverse hole on the case. So that's mainly why I wanted to wash it out because there were some metal shavings from tapping this and tapping back here. So adding this set screw is only done because he's going to be using third gear lockup. The Extreme Automatic kit doesn't come set up for third gear lockup, so that's something you'd have to talk to him about. Uh, and this is something that he added. So there's actually a plate modification and some other stuff, and then we had to drill this. So if you're not doing third gear lockup and you don't know that it is set up for third gear lockup, don't, don't do this step. All right, so first thing I'm going to do with the case is do this rear seal. So i got a big snap ring in here, so I'm just going to take this snap ring out. And I can work on getting the seal out. I'm also going to be doing the bushing, so I'll probably tap that out right away. The bushing that we're using is an anti-walkout bushing, and it's going to have a roller bearing on it. And I can work on tapping this seal out of here. All right. So the anti-walkout bushing and bearing kit is this part number here. 
it has to be pounded in from the inside of the case. I know there's some videos out there showing to do it from the outside of the case and you can do that. This kit is set up with the correct bushing and the bearings and shims so you don't have to worry about any of that. You can just do it correctly from the inside and your anti-walkout looks like this. It has this big lip on it that gets pounded in from the inside of the case so it can't actually wiggle itself and fall out the back. Also comes with some shims, different size shims. Then it has a bearing and your bearing is set up that it fits right around the outside of this bushing. So you can pump, pound this bushing in all the way and then bearing goes right around the outside of this. Okay, so I did get the bushing driven all the way in. I'm gonna take one washer and the bearing. I did measure with a caliper how thick this is. So what I usually like to do is measure the thickness of the old bearing and washer. And then I'll find a combination for the new shim and the bearing that's closest to that. And that's what I'll start with. When I've done that in the past, the end play ended up coming out okay. So we're just gonna do that on this one. One thing I'm gonna watch out for is to make sure that the bushing is actually driven in far enough that it's sitting below the bearing. And then I'm gonna put the rear carrier back in and then I'll test it and make sure the carrier is actually riding on the bearing and not riding on the bushing. So now I have the rear carrier back in and you can see that it, it turns real nice and smooth. If it's riding on the bushing, it's not just gonna freewheel like that. It'll actually stop pretty quick, so. This one looks good. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and drive the seal back in, the new seal. You just gotta make sure you drive it in far enough to get the snap ring in there. So once that groove is exposed, I know I'm good. All right. If you don't have a driving tool like that, you can really get creative and use whatever you need. I've used a two and a half inch intercooler pipe before and that worked pretty well too. And then next I'll repeat the same process for the tail housing bushing, rear seal, and then I'll replace the rubber ring inside here. Reverse band, so I am going to put this thing in before I drop the rear carrier assembly in. These two little dimples here get hooked right onto those two little dowels that are sticking out. All right, so I did take some fluid and just rub it around on the material on the inside of the band. There we go. Now the best method I've found to do this is just take a big vice grip clamp, clamp that little rib up there. And drop the whole thing in. Only real modification that I'm gonna be doing here is taking this second ring off. And this modification is gonna be for part of the dual feed. Then we'll take these three holes, line them up with the bottom of the case, and we can put the center support down. And if it doesn't come down all the way, I'm just going to take the output shaft here and then rotate it a little bit. And you'll see the center support fall down into position. Three holes are lined up. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the beveled snap ring in. See there's a flat edge here. Beveled edge goes up. There we go, make sure it clicks in all the way around. Next we can start working on putting the intermediate clutch pack in. So I'm gonna take the factory wave plate, put the wave plate in. This just goes right on top of the center support. And then we can start putting the intermediate clutches in there. Alternate them every other. The first steel is gonna go down towards the wave plate and then the last clutch is gonna be facing up and then the pressure plate will go on the top. Now the pressure plate can go on. Pressure plate does have this long section here that doesn't have any notches in it. That's going to go over in the 9 o'clock position. And there's really only one way that it can go on there. So now that that's in, you can put your intermediate snap ring on. And I'd recommend upgrading this snap ring. I've broken the snap ring before and you lose second gear then. And you can just order them individually even if you Google or go on Amazon and type in 4L80 heavy duty snap ring. You'll find thicker versions. This is the same thing as installing the other snap rings. Make sure it goes down, engages all the way around. And your intermediates are done. I will go through the direct drum here, pull the snap ring out. Pretty easy. And then you can pull these out like this, or you can just dump them into your hand. 
So just dumped it out. Next step, I'm gonna be working on the director arms, getting the springs and the pistons out. This time I'm using a press. I do have a budget way to do this that I showed in a previous video right here. Just using some simple wood clamps and getting the job done. But as I've done these transmissions more and more, I went out and bought the press just because it's a little bit more convenient. It's not as much of a struggle. But the clamp method works well enough if you're just gonna do it one time and be done with it. Thing you have a spring set and then the piston comes out. So this one's marked direct on the bottom. We're gonna be dual feeding this transmission. So I'm gonna take this lip seal right out right away. Don't need that guy where we're going. Next, we're gonna drill the relief hole down in this section here. What I like to do is look on the back where you have this little machined line for balancing and I'll pick one of those spots because it's a little bit thinner and that's where I'm gonna drill my hole through. I'm using a 60,000 drill bit, so it's really small. Be really careful, don't break the thing, don't snap it off inside the, the drum. Now I have the hole there. Now we can work on the assembly of the drum. So this lip seal is taken out because it's part of the dual feed mod. So it basically is filling here and here. You take the seal out, it applies fluid on the entire piston where the normal apply is divided by the lip seal. So when you take that out, it applies on the whole piston so you get more clamping force. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some assembly lube and put it on the lip seal and we'll put some inside the drum. There's actually still some fluid inside the drum or some film from fluid, so it should be pretty decent. Put some on the inner lip seal also, and then we can drop the piston into the drum. So I'm just gonna use a feeler gauge, and I'm just gonna go around the lip seal and tuck the lip seal in so we can drop the piston down. There we go. Now the piston just dropped right in. So the Extreme Automatics kit does come with a different spring pack for the direct drum. And basically your spring pack just looks like this little sandwich plate here. So what you need to do is use like a flathead and pry that bottom section away. And then you can actually separate the springs from this top disc. So if you're doing stock piston with the replacement springs, you can just put it back together like this. These springs will actually clip into here most of the time. They're kind of loose, but they will clip in kind of where they need to go. And then you can reassemble this just like it was with the new springs. On this transmission, we actually did an aluminum piston with a six clutch direct. So if you're doing that, just take your new springs, put them in just like this, and then you can use your factory plate and go over the top. Just make sure that the springs are centered on the little holes and then you would press it on like normal. Next I'm going to go ahead and put the springs on. So I'll take the spring assembly over to the press, put it on over the piston, press it down, and put the snap ring on. Oh, actually I just got it by hand. Look at that. And I did go ahead and do the forward drum right away. Now we can start working on putting the clutches in both the drums. Alright, so pulling both sets of steels out of the pack, you can see we have five and five. They're the same diameter, so they would fit in both drums. But the differences are the direct drum has all flat edges here. The forward drum has these little dovetail edges on them. The direct drum is also thicker. So these are about 0 .9, 0 .91, 0 .915 is the book spec. And these are 0 .775. So... The forwards are thinner and have the dovetail. Directs are thicker and don't have the dovetail. I'm going to get the clutches out of the pan and we'll start to throw them together. All right, so direct drum. And you can see this ring around the wave plate is what goes on the piston. So I'm going to put that in first. And then I'm going to do steel. Clutch. Steel clutch. Steel clutch. Steel. Steel. Just keep repeating that till we get them all in there. So you have a clutch on the top and then pressure plate goes on. And then snap ring goes on. Also do the same thing with the forward right away. Take the wave plate, put the wave plate in. Steel. 
And then next we're going to put the forward hub in, but I'm going to be doing an upgraded forward hub. So let's get that out. Okay, so forward drum, it's ready for the forward hub now. This is the old hub. It's a little bit thinner than the new hub. So this has some more thickness around here so it doesn't break as easy. It also has a roller bearing on it. So when it's fully assembled sitting on top of the direct drum like this, it's a nice rollerized bearing. I did take the thrust washer off of the back of the old drum and got the bearing on there. I can just drop it down inside the forward drum. Make sure it chops all the way down, metal on metal. Put the pressure plate on. Go ahead and put the snap ring on. go. Now the forward drum can go back in. Make sure my bearing is on or thrust washer if you're using thrust washer. There we go. So now I'm going to take the input shaft out. We did get the new overdrive planet, so that one's nice and smooth. This one's all messed up because the bearing was starting to flake off and it was metal flakes kind of grinding on this thing. So we're going to replace this one with the new one and we're going to do the billet input shaft. This input shaft is just held in with a snap ring. Spread it apart and then get something behind it to get it off the groove. There we go. Don't lose the snap ring uh, and then this input shaft just comes out and we can flip this thing over and what I'll do first is I'll go through this drum and get the clutches replaced and then we'll work on the shaft all right so this just comes out so we'll check all the rollers in there make sure those aren't wobbly or there's no play in them well that's actually the old one so we'll check the new one make sure it's all good so it actually feels feels nice because it's rebuilt We'll take the sprague out. This is plastic overdrive sprague, so we'll make sure that we don't hurt this thing coming out of it. And don't lose any of the little pieces. And I can go ahead and just use a flathead to get the snap ring out. We can pull all the clutches out. These things always like look really nice in most of them because there's not a lot of load on the overdrive and the fourth gear so these clutches and steels always look really good okay so we got the overdrive drum apart I'm just gonna lube up this piston and we'll put it back in these pistons always look really good coming out I, I've never really seen one that was even close to being messed up but we'll go through and change it get that thing in next this spring plate goes in and then the snap ring goes on to hold the spring plate down. And then I know I'm just showing the assembly first, but the disassembly is just the opposite of this. So I think what I'll do first is I'll get the snap ring down over the sprague section. And then we'll press this down and uh, get the snap ring in the right groove. Alright, so now what I'll do here is I'll just use the press. Press that piston down. And then I'll use the snap ring pliers to widen this thing out and get it down into that groove. I probably won't record it because I'm going to fight with it for a while, but that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so got this thing in there. Got new bushings in on both sides. We're doing all new bushings, so I haven't shown all the bushings yet, but we're, we're doing all the bushings as we go through it. All right, so I got done soaking the clutches. We're going to put one steel in. And we're just going to alternate until we get all three of them in, just like all the other drums. Then the pressure plate is the thickest one and goes on the top. Then you can put the snap ring in. Put the spray back in. And then since this is completely new, I'm just going to get some uh, fluid on it and put some assembly lube around some key parts. 
All right, it's got this thing all lubed up now. There's a bearing down inside here, so I made sure I got that real good. Put some assembly lube on the gears. Make sure I got this little bushing wear area here. And now I'll just go through and put this over the top. So that'll go down over the planet once it gets in the first clutch. So now you can see that it only turns one direction. So I'll just continue to do this until it actually falls down and I gotta clear three clutches. Sometimes it'll fall down if you just do it like this. Sometimes you actually gotta lift it up and rotate a little bit. There, now it dropped down. Now you can hear it's like metal on metal and not metal on clutch. So now you know it's down all the way. Set that to the side, but make sure not to flip it over or rotate it because then you can actually pop it back out. So I'm just going to keep it exactly like this, hold it together, and then I'll move it out of the way. All right, so I have the four Teflon ceiling rings that are going to go on the input shaft. And we do have the new 300M billet shaft. I believe he got this one at Summit Racing. And I did decide to treat myself and get the expander and compressing tools. This is like 50 bucks. I've done several before without using these tools, but I figured I've been doing them more often, so I might as well at least try the tool. All right, so there we go. I got it over the tapered end onto the flat edge. I'll slide it off and see if it slides right over the shaft. Oh, still a little tight. All right, so I pushed it over the tapered edge to the flat spot and then put it over on the big end, pushed it down a little bit. I'll just kind of push this thing in to start compressing it. Then the other taper tool goes on to compress it down into the groove. And just pull this thing on. And just push the tapered section on over the ceiling ring and then it starts to compress it down into the groove. Okay, so we got the new bushing and seal in the pump. Got the new separator plate on it. I'll just line this thing up as good as I can. Then I'll take the rest of the pump and I'm going to kind of use this part as a guide for how to orient it. This is going to flip over on top of it this way. Also did do all new bushings in the pump. New ceiling rings. I'm just going to go over the top like this, grab one of the bolts. There I got one. Alrighty, so then I'll just tighten these up. I'm gonna make sure I put my splash shield on. That actually goes back in this hole over here. Then what I'll do is just kind of get these things a little bit closer to where they need to be. And then just go around and line everything up, make sure it's Make sure it's good. So that's pretty good. Next what I'll do is, you can see that this journal has been machined off now. Just machine it all the way around or you could use a grinder, cut it all the way around. But it used to be the same diameter as this. Now it's gone. So that's just gonna pass fluid between two passages. Take the spring, put it in. Put the TCC valve in, put the little aluminum plug in, and next I'll just take this snap ring and squeeze it and push it down into this hole with the plug. There we go. Next and last thing is just this O-ring on here. This seals the pump to the case. This comes out pretty easy. We can take our new one, make sure we lube it up, and put the new one over. Alright, now the pump is done. That guy drops in pretty easy. I can put the overrun drum in.
All right, now I'm gonna put the pump on. I'm gonna go ahead and torque all these to uh, 18 foot pounds. Hazard, I'll go ahead and put my center support bolt in and then the fourth drum bolt. All right, so got everything back together. We're gonna start working on the valve body now. And we did put this plug back in on the side. This is pretty self-explanatory. Just goes in from the inside. One thing that we did differently was put a 700R4 plug inside of the billet plug that comes with it. This was the original two pin plug. We change it over to a three pin. So there's actually, it's a four pin plug, but there's three wire pins actually through it. So three, three pins, one's gonna be for the lockup, one's gonna be for the trans brake, and one's gonna be to try to keep the factory temp sensor. So that's why we switched it over from the two wire to the three wire. So now we'll start working on the valve body and getting the reverse servo in, and should be done tonight. All right, so now we're gonna take the one two accumulator out and spring out. And then we'll replace it with the spring that comes with the kit, which is this big boy here. And then we can put this on. I'll probably clean it up a little bit. All right, so we cleaned this off a little bit. We replaced this seal, put some assembly lube on it. We'll put the new gasket on and put the cover on. All right, so you did clean the cover off. And the servo does sit in there crooked if it's your first time doing that. That's normal that it's in there crooked. We'll push this down, get the cover on, just start the bolts. All right, so this is the separator plate. That goes on with no gaskets, no check balls in the case. The che there's only one check ball with this felt body. So there's two different versions. Second gear leave option only uses one shuttle ball and the other one uses two. So the one that we're using has second gear leave, so it only uses the one ball, and it's two separate types of valve bodies. So this goes on here, we'll line this up as good as we can. And this is just a beaut, look at it. Extreme Automatics, this thing's nice. A lot of fingerprints on it. But. So I think what I'll do is, I'm gonna use some assembly lube to hold that ball in there. We'll just goober some assembly lube on it. Let's stick that in so we can flip it upside down and don't have to worry about it falling out. All the bolt holes look like they're lined up. And then this uses the factory manual valve, so you'll just reuse that. Put it in the right way. And make sure the manual valve is actually connected to the shift lever. And it does have separate instructions for where all of the bolts go, all different sizes. So we'll just follow that. And there is a set screw in right here, and it says in the instructions to remove the set screw for 97 and up lube. This is a 2004, mm -hmm. so we're going to take that set screw out. All right, so I think we got all the bolts in the right spots. The 45 millimeters go here. There's a whole bunch of these. So there's like 20 of these bolts, and then there's two lighter colored bolts that are shorter. Some go into the case, some just go into the valve body. Like these bolts here are just short, so they go into the valve body, but not through the case. So you can see all that. And then this one is flush. This is just an Allen head that goes underneath the lockup solenoid. Lockup solenoid. Goes in here, I put some assembly lube on that O-ring. And then the lube port is reused, but you do have to bend it a little bit to get it to, to get it to go in there right. So I did bend it in a way that it kind of favors itself into the into the valve body, if that makes sense. So it's like pulling itself in, so it's not trying to pull it out. So that fits decent. I'll just go ahead and tighten them down. All right, so as we tighten these bolts down, there's a couple wiring things that we need to do. So one of the trans brake solenoid 
wires has the spade on it and that goes over to the plug over here and the other one you, the instructions say not to cut it so you want to coil it up he just wrapped it around his finger and uh, we're just going to tuck this down here and then bolt it on and these for the lockup solenoid just need to get cut off so we're going to cut these off we're going to ground one to the same spot on the valve body and then we're going to extend one wire to go over to the plug all right so here it is all finished up we did go through and add the little detent holder back on there we forgot to put that on so that's on there now finished up the wiring just took the positive off the lockup solenoid and then added another wire here and then put two layers of heat shrink on it and then zip tied the heat shrink in place so he's just got to add a connection for the temperature sensor and then connection for the lockup solenoid. The transbrake solenoid already has the little spade on it uh, and then it should be good to go. So filter's got to go on and pan's got to go on and we're all done.